how can we define an inner product between two functions. In this video, you will learn a way to do this, which is okay for some applications we will encounter later on and which resembles our ordinary inner product on our end quite a bit more than it may look at first sight. So let us take a look. We take uh, C, A, B, so the continuous functions on A, B, and we want to have an inner product. We will use an example. We take in our example A equals 0, B equals 4, so continuous functions on the interval 0, 4 mapping to R. And the question is, how can we define an inner product between F and G? So let's take a look at R2. What could we do? Well, in R2 we took in a product u1 v1 plus u2 v2. And we can do something similar, of course, for our functions. Uh, so what can we do? We can say, well, pick the function value of f at 2 and of g at 2, and a function value of f at 4 and g at 4, and multiply and add, like this over here. Or maybe normalize, because you took steps of, or of 2, because you went from 0 to 2 and from 2 to 4, so you can also multiply with a factor of 2, of course, if you like. You could do something like that. But then from the functions, you only take information at two different points, and in between there's lots of information. So what you could do, you could say, well, let's half the distance, so not only at 2 and 4, but we take uh, f1 g1 plus f2 g2 plus f3 g g3 plus f3 f4 g4, like here, then you take into account more information of the function. Well, let's see how that looks in a graph, what you're actually doing. First, the second line here in red. So, what did we do? Uh, uh, on the x axis, I plotted x. On the y axis, we plotted f times g. And let's see what happens if you take the second inner product, like 2 times f to g2 plus 2 times f. Uh, f4 g4. And in fact you take the function value f2 g2 over there and you multiply by 2, which means that you are effectively taking the uh, area under the uh, red here rectangle. And then you also take uh, f4 g4 multiply with 2, so you're taking the area on the red triangle over there as your inner product. And what did we do in this next step? Well, there, uh, instead of taking the function values at only at two points, we took them at four points. So there we took here the area basically under the blue uh, curve, so the blue rectangles. And well, you already see, of course, what's going to happen if we would add more points, you get more rectangles, and you say, hey, this looks like, if you continue like that, uh, uh, you, of course, you just get the integral under the function f, g, and that is exactly how we are going to define our inner product. So we take our inner product as the integral from a to b of f dx. Well, we have to satisfy those three pro properties, symmetry, uh, integral f times g is, of course, the same as the integral of g times f, a uh, linearity, follows from the linearity of integrals. Positivity is slightly less trivial. Well, the first one, integral of f squared bigger or equal than zero, that one is trivial, uh, because f squared is bigger than zero and you add stuff, so that's okay. Uh, and the integral of f squared dx equals zero, if and only if f is zero, that hinges on the continuity of f, that's slightly less trivial, uh, but also that one is satisfied. So, as our inner product, in the, we will take this one over here, and you have learned from this video that it's actually not so much unlike the normal inner product in R2.